Hey guys, what's going on? <clears throat> so, I will be doing a video this Sunday, and I'm going to title it, Seeing God. So we'll be in Exodus chapter 33, so you guys can pause the video and go there, or you can just do it while I'm praying. So I'm going to pray first. So Lord, we just thank you for this time. We just pray that you would use this study to your glory, Lord, and use what little I have, and bless it and multiply it. And use it to uh, bless these kids that are at home, God. And I pray that you would just be with them, that they would be uh, growing closer to you in this time. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So you guys remember last time, like, I totally messed up on Isaiah, that verse. So I do have it memorized. And I had it memorized then. I just forgot, you know, right there on the spot, being on camera and stuff like that. So, but it is, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor what my ways, your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts than your thoughts, and my ways than your ways. Bam! So, there it is. I hope you guys have it memorized, too. But before we get started, I want you guys to do a little something, okay? I want you to draw and maybe write on a piece of paper things about yourself. So you can draw some of your favorite things, your some food. Toys, electronics, if you like your iPad or something, you can draw that. Um, maybe things you don't like, foods you like, foods you don't like, and just go ahead and do that. And that kind of did something. You don't have to, and this just proves that you don't have to be an artist to do this, okay? So I drew a couple things. I hope you can see it. There we go. Okay, so the one right up here, that's sleep. That's the guy sleeping because I really like sleeping. The picture, right, let me get that. Right there is an Oakland Raiders symbol. And then let's see if I can make this see better. I think this is a football. And that's a baby. That's supposed to symbolize Hannah. That's a little girl. That's supposed to symbolize Ariana. And then here's a bride. That's my wife. Some ribeye steak, because I love ribeye steak. And then right here... Let me get that in there. There it is. That's some ham. I don't like ham. So those are that's my picture right there. I should have used like a pen, but you know, I didn't think about that because I'm not really an artist. So but yeah, just do something like that and uh, just kind of help with the study. So you can pause the video right now and just do a little bit of drawings, something about yourself so that if somebody were to see that, they would know a couple things about you. So now you know about me. I like football. I like the Oakland Raiders, I like to sleep, I like my family, I like ribeye, but I don't like ham, okay? So there you go, now you know a little sum about me. So yes, we will be in Exodus chapter 33 today, but before we get to that chapter, I actually have to talk a little bit about chapter 32, okay? So this message is titled, Seeing God, okay? And that's what we're going to see in Exodus chapter 33, among other things. But before we get to that chapter, we actually kind of have to do a little review of chapter 32, okay? So when it comes to Exodus chapter 32, God had just given Israel the Ten Commandments, and he spoke to them in uh, chapter 20, and he gave out the list. And here's the actual list. I have them all right here. It says, so the first commandment is to not worship other gods, okay? The second is don't make statues or pictures of God and worship them. The third is don't take the Lord's name in vain. The fourth is keep the Sabbath. The fifth is your guys' favorite, honor your father and mother. Then don't murder, that's the hard one, right? Don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't lie, and don't covet. So God spoke these out to the people of Israel. They knew them. And that brings us to this chapter, okay? So in chapter 32, Moses was actually gone for 40 days and 40 nights. He was on Mount Sinai, and he was praying and actually writing out the Ten Commandments and a lot of other things. Okay, actually God wrote out the Ten Commandments, but he brought up the stones for God to write those out. So the people are at the bottom of Mount Sinai, and they're just there waiting, right? And they're probably getting bored just like you guys. Okay, I know a lot of you guys are at home, and you're stuck in your house, and you can't go out and play with your friends. Maybe some of you guys are playing with your friends. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the people of Israel are getting really impatient. They're like, where is Moses? Why is he taking so long? So they eventually just kind of take things in their own hands. Okay. 
They go to Aaron. They say, "Hey, you make us a god." And they make Aaron take their earring, or Aaron makes them takes their earrings off, and they make this calf or this cow, this golden cow, and they begin to worship it. Just before or right after God had told them, "Don't make any gods like me. Don't worship any other thing." So they just heard the rule. God said, "Don't do this." And then what do they do? They go and do it. All right, so they're out. They're worshiping this calf. They're dancing around. Moses finally comes down from the mountain. He sees what happens. He has a two uh, command, uh, the two stones of the Ten Commandments on in his hands, and he drops them. He breaks them, and he kind of yells at the people and reprimands them and says, "Hey, you guys shouldn't be doing this. Uh, we just, you know, we just went over this. You guys, you shouldn't be making idols and worshiping them, and and so forth." And right after that, Moses goes up to the mountain and he begins to pray for the people for forgiveness and mercy for the people of Israel because of their great sin. So that, with all that, that kind of might be some of you guys this week. Maybe some of you guys are continually getting into trouble and you're breaking the rules. Your parents say, don't do this, 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 and you find yourself doing those things. Maybe some of you are like the children of Israel. You're getting impatient because you're stuck inside all day. You're feeling cooped up and bored, you know, waiting for this coronavirus thing to end, you know, just like, you know, the other people are getting impatient. And then maybe you guys are hating the, what are they, was it the Zoom videos, you know, doing uh, homework online, school night. Maybe some of you guys don't like that. Yeah, and maybe this is causing you guys to get rowdy. You know, the children of Israel, they began to dance around the golden calf, and they were getting rowdy, and they are doing thing, a lot of things they weren't supposed to. And maybe that's some of you guys uh, this month, you know? I know that when Cody and I, that's my brother, were stuck in the house, especially my grandparents, we would fight and wrestle, and we'd get into a lot of trouble, you know? Because first we'd start out playing, and then we'd start hurting each other and so forth. And we get, yeah, like I said, we'd get a lot of in trouble, you know? And... Maybe that's some of you guys are starting to disobey your parents and maybe even God. Well, if that's you, just remember that, you know, Jesus is praying for you. Moses prayed for the people. He went up and asked for forgiveness and mercy upon the people. But Hebrews 7.25 says, Therefore he, Jesus, is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. So yeah, Moses went up on the mountain to pray for those people for forgiveness and so forth. And Jesus is praying for you guys. So if you're getting in a lot of trouble this last couple months or so, just know that Jesus is praying for you guys and that you should be praying and so forth. So now we get into Exodus 33. Let me turn there on my Bible. I'm in chapter 20. So yeah, we're going to be in 33. And I'm going to just read the first three verses. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from the here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I will give it. And I'll send my angel before you, and I'll drive out the Canaanite and the Amorite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are stiff-necked people." So after the golden calf incident, God tells the children of Israel to go to the promised land. But as for the commandments or the consequence for breaking God's commandments, God tells the people that he is not going with them, but instead he's sending an angel with them instead. So the people's consequence, there's always consequence or actions, is that, hey, now God is not going to go with them to the promised land. He's not going to be there physically to go fight the nations that they're going to have to fight to take the take the land. And God then tells the people that they deserve greater punishment for their sin, and he calls them stubborn. Now, what does stubborn mean? Stubborn means that you don't change your mind easily. For example, if your parents have to tell you to do something over and over and over again, and you refuse to listen, you are probably stubborn. And just to be honest, Everybody is stubborn in some way, all right? And some people are just more stubborn than others, okay? So God calls the children of Israel stubborn. He says, hey, I'm because you worship this idol, I'm not going to go with you to the promised land. I'm going to instead send an angel with you, okay? So now we're going to go to verses 4 through 6. And it says, And when the people heard this bad news, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. 
For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are stiff-necked people. I could come up into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now therefore take off your ornaments, that I may know what to do to you. So the children of Israel stripped, off themse or stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. So when the people hear of their consequence right after they you know, made a mistake, it doesn't say they complained or they argued. And they, you know, they didn't say, God, that's not fair. Or, you know, why do we have to, you know, why aren't you going with us now? That's not, that's not very nice. They didn't call God unfair. They didn't get mad that they were in trouble. Instead, it said they mourned and they took off their jewelry. When it says they mourned, it means the people were sorry that they disobeyed God and that they were sad that they offended him. You know, when we do something wrong, we shouldn't be sad for ourselves or feel bad for ourselves because of consequences. What I mean by this is, you know, when we get in trouble sometimes or when we sin, we shouldn't be mad at our parents or God because we have a consequence. We shouldn't think or say, nobody loves me. I'm the worst kid ever. You know, you guys know you guys know what you guys say because I said the same thing when I was a kid. We shouldn't think that way because, for one, it's not true. You're probably not the bat, the worst kid ever, and every, you know, your whole family loves you. God loves you. It's not true. Those things aren't true, and that's why we shouldn't think that way. You know, we were the ones wrong for sinning and so forth. So we should be thinking of those that we hurt or disobeyed, and that's what God wants us to do. We should feel bad that we offended whoever we offended, and we feel feel sad that we offended God, and because of this. Sadness, it should cause us to change our actions and try to make things right. So the people took off their jewelry and ornaments, because that's what they wore in those days, to show their sadness and that they were upset, you know, that they broke God's commandment. And they had the right attitude, and so should we. <clears throat> so I'm going to read verses 9 through 11, so we're going to see what happens next. I'm going to skip over some sections of this because I'm, it'll take too long. But verse 9 says, And it came to pass, when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend, and he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man did not depart from the tabernacle. So the people are mourning. The people are upset that they, you know, offended God. And Moses does something very interesting. I think this is so cool. Instead of sitting there and thinking or saying to the people of Israel, hey, that's what you guys get. You guys broke the law. You know, God, you know, yeah, you don't deserve God to come with you. Moses goes into the tabernacle and he begins to pray for the people. Okay. When Moses gets into the tabernacle, it says a cloud fell down upon or it stood over the door of the tabernacle, meaning that God met with Moses. And it says in verse 11 that God spoke to Moses face to face, meaning that Moses spoke to God and God spoke right back and Moses heard God's voice. And I think that was so cool. I wish that was me because, you know, I'm be honest. When I pray, I don't get answers right away. Sometimes it could take a long time for me to get answers. But Moses... He got to speak to God, ask God questions, and God gave him direct answers right away. And whenever Moses prayed, God was right there to answer him and, and so forth. And I think that's so cool. And that's what we get to look forward to when we get to heaven. God is going to do the same thing. We can just go up to God anytime, ask him questions, have him tell us stories, do whatever. You know, we'll have that same access, you know. So that's going to be a really cool thing to look forward to. <clears throat> So in, in the next section of this chapter, we're going to see, we're going to get to see what Moses was praying and talking to God about. So that's verses 12 through 23, but I'm just going to read verses 12 and 13, and then we'll keep going. It says, then Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I might find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. There's a lot of graces in there. It's kind of like a tongue twister. But yeah, so again, Moses went to the tabernacle to pray for his people, and now we're getting to see what, he's, what is he talking to God about. Okay, So Moses begins his conversation with God, saying, 
Who is going to lead the nation to the promised land? So Moses is like, hey, I know you said earlier that you're not going. You said you're just going to send this angel. Well, I don't even know this angel. So who's going to take us to the promised land? Is it going to be you or this or this angel? And Moses asked God to forgive the nation of its sin and to take them back as his people. And Moses asked for grace and that God would reveal himself to Moses so that Moses would know God better. So, yeah, Moses is praying for the people. He's saying, look. We don't want this angel to go with us. We want you to go with us. And we want you to accept the nation of Israel back as your people. And then Moses asks, and I want to know you better. Show me your way. Show me who you are. And I think that's a really good prayer to pray, especially if you are you don't know a lot about God. If you feel like you don't really know God or you don't hear from him, why don't you pray that prayer? Hey, God, show me who you are. Show me who Jesus is. Show me your way. I think that's a great prayer to pray. So, yeah, that is why we have to pray and read our Bibles and serve God on our own as well with, as with others so we can know him better. That's how we get to know him better. You know, Moses had a special relationship with God. He could ask God whatever he wanted. He could get direct answers. But we have the Bible here. Everything that we need to know and everything that, uh, you know, we need to hear, we have right here. And that's why I always encourage you guys. Yeah, it's great to listen to me talk. And I know you guys don't like it anyways. But you guys need to be reading your own Bibles, and you guys need to be praying just as well, okay? In verses 15 and 16, I'm going to read that real quick. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, so this is Moses talking. He says, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. Moses tells God that he doesn't want to go anywhere without him. So the Israelites are on their way to the promised land. And God says, look, God, if you're not going, we don't want to go. We're going to stay right here. We're not going to go with any angel. We're not going to go with anybody else. If you don't go, we're not going. <clears throat> so Moses wanted to be where God is. And God answers Moses, says that he will forgive the people and he'll give with them. And there's many reasons why Moses, you know, is a special person in the Bible. But I think one of the biggest reasons why Moses was so special was because Moses always prayed for others. Okay? The people of Israel made a big mistake and got punished by God. And instead of saying, you deserved it and, you know, this is your guys' fault, Moses prayed that God would forgive the people and lighten up on the consequences. And God answered Moses' prayer. He was an intercessor, okay? And that's very important, to be a somebody that prays for others. Praying for people is one of the most important ways we can serve God and change the life of others. But it's also the hardest because a lot of the times God uses those prayers in people's lives but we don't see the results right away and in fact sometimes it can be a long time until we see prayers answered but it's important to pray for others and Moses knew that and he spent most of his life praying for God's blessing and forgiveness on the lives of others because God because of Moses love for others he got to see God in special ways okay now we're gonna get to see what Moses sees of God. So verse 18, it says, And he said, Please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I'll take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. <clears throat> so Moses here asked to see God's glory, or in other words, Moses asked to see God's face. God's answer to Moses was no, but God said it wasn't safe for Moses, being an imperfect man, to see God, and it would actually kill Moses to see him. But God said to Moses, I'll do this. I'll put you behind a rock and I'll pass by you. And I'll pass by you. I'll protect you with my hand. And when I pass by, I will let you see the glow that I make. But you cannot see me and live. So Moses got to see the afterglow or the light that came from God. And I think that's so cool. I wish I could see that. And I will one day when I get to heaven. But here's the truth. We won't be able to physically see God until we get to heaven. 
But we can see what God is like through the stories of the Bible, the truth of the Bible, and the different experiences we have with them. Jesus said, whoever sees God or sees Jesus sees God. If we know what Jesus is like, we will know what God is like. And knowing that is way more important than physically seeing God. You know, in this chapter, we got to see a lot about God. And we saw that God hates sin and what it, and he, you know, and he hates what sin does to people. We saw that God is merciful and forgiving because he forgave the children of Israel. And we saw that God wants a relationship with us and he wants to reveal himself to us. We are learning all of this in one story and we want to keep learning about him and that is why we want to, we should keep reading our bibles we must be praying we must be serving others so we can see god's character by looking at your drawings and pictures if i could see them right now i could understand a whole lot about you guys but the bible is like kind of pretty much the same thing by reading the bible and seeing the stories and how god reacts we can see a lot about god and that is how we see god we don't see him physically but we get to see who he is, by what he does, and what he says. So that's all I got for you guys today. I just want to thank you guys for listening. Your homework for this week is to pick three people, whoever you want, and pray for them every day, at least once a day. So be like Moses. Pray for people. Bye, guys!